This is a, a surgical procedure whereby a worn out or damaged joint is replaced with a new artificial one. It's one of the best treatments for pain and limited function. It's normally performed after all the non-surgical management methods have failed. And these may have included things like physiotherapy, painkillers, walking aids, and activity modification. The commonest indication is for wear and tear osteoarthritis. And this is increasingly common as people are more active and using their joints more and more. I'm a hip and knee surgeon and I specialize in primary, so it's first time joint replacements, in robotic assisted joint replacements, and in revision joint replacements where a joint has failed or is no longer working correctly. Um, both hips and knees, uh, the technology is improving all the time. They're now better bearing surfaces, which means they last longer. There's additional technology to aid implantation and reduce potential complications. I commonly use robotic assistance during the surgery, and this allows me to minimize errors, improve the accuracy of implant position and size, and hopefully create a more normal feeling balanced joint replacement. Most patients are in hospital for between one to three days, and this is uh, reducing all the time. It's due to improved anesthetic techniques, better technology, enhanced rehabilitation, uh, and patients are up and about very much quicker than they used to be in the past. There's some small risks, uh, like any other surgical procedure, and it's important to fully discuss these with your surgeon preoperatively. It's also useful to take some time to consider your options so you're fully aware of the intended procedure and have the opportunity to ask any questions about it. Obviously, once the joint has been replaced, the procedure cannot be undone. An arthroscopy is a keyhole procedure where a camera is inserted into a joint. Most commonly, this is in the knee, although most joints in the body can be accessed in this manner. It's often combined with a keyhole surgical procedure using specially designed instruments that fit through the keyhole incisions. This is well established, particularly in the knee, and commonly used for cartilage and ligament surgery. It's generally done under a general anaesthetic and as a day case procedure. An arthroplasty is a, a bigger operation. It's a joint replacement and it's done through an open incision. This means the recovery and length of stay in hospital is slightly longer. The old worn out joint is completely removed and a new prosthetic one inserted. This tends to be done for end stage disease compared to arthroscopy, which is a much smaller procedure and generally undertaken in a, a joint that is damaged but not worn out. The most common condition is osteoarthritis. This is a, a wear and tear arthritis where the articular cartilage within the joint has worn away. As a result, the joint is painful, particularly with activity, and it is often swollen, stiff, and sometimes deformed. Hip and knee replacements are the commonest forms of arthroplasty in the UK and generally have very good results at improving the patient's quality of life. Other conditions that are treated with arthroplasty include trauma, for example, with a broken hip, a new hip joint is put in, inflammatory conditions like rheumatoid arthritis, something called avascular necrosis, where the blood supply to a joint and in particular the hip is disrupted uh, and then it needs replacing. Some childhood conditions like developmental dysplasia of the hip or perthase disease lead to early wear and tear and a subsequent joint replacement. And infection can be very destructive and can destroy a joint and ultimately lead, lead to a joint replacement. This last indication is fairly rare uh, and any surgeon that's treating this needs to be completely sure that the infection has been eradicated before the joint can be replaced. The diagnosis begins with a consultation and a history and examination. The patient is often symptomatic with ongoing pain and disability. The pain is normally localized to the affected joint and may limit walking distance, function, hobbies, and cause night pain. The examination assesses the diseased joint and it often confirms the swelling, stiffness, or instability. The diagnosis is then further confirmed with x-rays and occasionally specialized scans like a CT or MRI. If the symptoms and imaging are severe enough, then a joint replacement may be the only reliable surgical solution. As I mentioned, this needs careful discussion with your consultant as an artificial joint is not normally quite as good as a normal one. 
and there are some very small potential complications. Whilst these are minimized as much as possible, they can never be completely eradicated. Before the surgery, it's helpful to maintain strength in your arthritic joint, uh, and this improves the recovery and speeds up the recovery time afterwards. Stopping smoking and having a healthy body weight is also beneficial. It makes the surgery safer and it improves the lifespan of the artificial joint. The patient is completely asleep or awake with what's called a regional anesthetic, which is often an injection in the back, plus or minus some sedation. The joint is opened up and exposed. Uh, obviously this can't be done with keyhole surgery and the incision needs to be the length of the implant and often either longer depending on the complexity or the patient's size. The disease joint is then removed and the bone prepared for the insertion of the new artificial joint. This artificial joint needs to be sized and inserted appropriately to restore the original normal anatomy. So that's things like leg length, muscle tension, stability of the joint. And then that artificial joint needs to be secured to the skeleton. For both hips and knees, careful planning is essential. And this can be done with specialized templating software or computer assisted technology. In either case, in, in any joint replacement, in fact, it's the bearing, it's the moving part of the joint that's, that's crucial. Uh, this is the location where potentially wear may occur. There are different types of bearing surfaces and most surgeons will be guided by the patient's age and activity level, as well as evidence from a database called the National Joint Registry. And this is a large national database of all joint replacements in the UK that shows the best performing bearing combinations. Once the implant is secure, so this is either with bone cement or a porous implant where, where bone grows into it or onto it, the joint is then closed and the patient can, be, can begin to mobilize once they feel up to it. With improved anesthetic techniques, this is often the same day. And I do perform a number of what we call day case arthroplasty procedures, whereby patients go home within 24 hours. This means they spend less time in hospital. And this particularly at the moment is a good thing. It also means recovering in a more relaxed and familiar environment, albeit with the same painkillers and the same physiotherapy schedule that you would receive in hospital.